Nintendo's $400 budget PC actually runs CS2 at at least 240 hertz, guys. That's exactly what we're about to find out in today's video, guys. This PC actually turned out pretty beefy, I'm not gonna lie. Like, for $400, I was super surprised what you can actually get right now on the market. I also tweaked the whole entire PC to really squeeze out the maximum performance, which we can get. I tested it on multiple settings. First of all, to the PC build itself, guys. This was actually a previous budget build, which I already used in a different project on this channel. It has a Ryzen 7 5800X with 32 gigs of DDF4 RAM. You can actually find this Ryzen with a motherboard and some RAM for under $200 on eBay nowadays, which actually shocked me a lot because this is still a really capable CPU. But since the last time when I used it, guys, in this config was still a RX 6500 XT, which is a quite entry budget card from AMD. It's not the worst, not at all, actually. But I figured out we need a little bit more performance because CS2 is pretty hard for demanding, especially if you want to keep at least consistent 240 hertz. So what I did, guys, I went back here into my shelf and I actually still had an RTX 2070 gigabyte OC in there, which I used like one or two years ago in my main gaming PC. So therefore I figured out, yeah, we're gonna take this one, which actually turned this whole entire PC build from $300 to $400. But I would definitely say it's been worth it, guys. You can get, by the way, RTX 2070s for super cheap nowadays on eBay, $150, $180, something like that. And I gotta say, that's in my personal opinion still, like since over a year now, the best budget card which you can actually get. So what I did in the first place was, of course, make sure that the PC is nice and clean. You know, I cleaned up all the dust and all that stuff. Of course, keep in mind, guys, in my version right now, yeah, I still had a water cooling block there for, I think, 60 or 70 euros, one from MSI, which I had left over. So I just built it in there. This is, of course, not in the budget itself, guys, but I figured out why should I not use it, you know? I guess I had it laying around, so therefore, you know, I just put it in there. I also put one of these, like, fake RGB blocks for your RAM actually on top. So it actually looks like we had RGB RAM, but in fact, there's like 12 bucks over on AliExpress. And first of all, of course, guys, I had to remove the RX 6500 XT, which was super easy. You basically just had to remove a four pin and then the little screw, you know, on the side. And I could actually take it out. Of course, I put it here to the side super gently, guys. Always be gentle with your hardware, especially if you want to resell it, guys. And yeah, as mentioned, then I went over to my shelf. Then I found this RTX 2070, which I then took over to my main setup. And yeah, I made sure that it's actually working, that it's like properly cleaned and all that stuff. It wasn't dusty at all. So I could straight up put it into the PC itself. Then again, putting one little screw to the side. And this one, you actually had a six and an eight pin to connect, guys. So therefore, it took a little bit more. But luckily, the PSU, which I was using, is 750 watt, 80 plus certified. So therefore, it should be no problem. And yeah, then I realized why well, I haven't used this PC for such a long time. Actually, guys, we had some issues. I actually had the infinite BIOS loop. So what I had to do is figure out, first of all, how I can actually make this PC run. And it turned out, for whatever reason, I had two 16 gig RAMs in there and then like two 8 gigs. So 32 and 16, how much is that? 30, 48 gigs of RAM. And of course, my PC didn't like that. And I figured out I just actually put the RAM in there the last time because I didn't know where to put it. So, you know, obviously I just put it into the PC. So after figuring out for literally one or two hours what was actually wrong with this PC and reinstalling Windows 10 entirely so we had a fresh copy, everything was set up. It was actually so weird because I thought it had something to do with that I had previously an AMD card and then replaced it with Nvidia without uninstalling the drivers actually. But yeah, then I got it to run guys and the first thing which I actually did was of course to start downloading CS2 in the background and in the meanwhile I was actually applying all of the tweaks to my PC now. First of all I used the deep bloater, the Chris Titus Tech Utility which is the best one in my opinion. I removed all of the bloatware, OneDrive, Cortana and all of that stuff which you really don't need on your PC. That's by the way the first thing which I would recommend everyone whenever you build a brand new gaming setup. Then I also made sure that my GPU had no power limitation with the MSI Afterburner. The next step I booted up the Nvidia Profile Inspector since it's a lot better than the control panel and I applied my own low input delay profile for CS2 which you can by the way find in my whole entire CS2 FPS boost guide. You can watch it afterwards guys but I basically just repeated all of these steps. Then I also used Process Lusser and made sure that none of my cores are actually parked, you know, created a bit some highest performance profile and went as well into my power settings and make sure that the maximum and minimum processor state is 100% to really squeeze out the maximum performance out of the CPU. And by the way, this is still amazing CPU even nowadays. Like I looked it up, you can even run up until like a 3080 Ti with this. So therefore guys, it always makes sense to first of all invest in your CPU and then in the GPU because if you have a heavy CPU, you can always upgrade the GPU afterwards. But if you have a weaker one, you always have to swap around the whole system. And yeah, once everything was installed, I restarted my PC, CS2 was ready and we hopped actually in there guys and the first thing which I did is I went into CS2 straight up applied the best comp settings in my opinion which are right now on screen as you can see guys and actually in a full-on bot match guys so that we have like a pretty realistic scenario for like a normal comp game 
I had well over 300 FPS with this build. On normal 1080p, I applied the highest hertz here on my monitor. I forgot that I was playing only on HDMI, that's why I couldn't use 360 but 240 hertz. It's still obviously really good. While playing this, even with smokes, molotovs and all that stuff, I got way over 300 FPS in most of the scenarios without even turning down my graphics to the lowest. Then also afterwards, I went into a deathmatch, guys. And keep in mind, this is like the ultimate benchmark because you have like how many people? 16 people, which is way more than the 10 on normal regular match. Even there, I was seeing super high fps like sometimes of course dips to like 180 160 but for most of the time 200 to 300 fps and then i want to know okay how can i squeeze out a little bit more performance and what i did is kept it actually at 1080p and turned down all the graphics to the lowest well almost the lowest because the fidelity mode i kept on balance i think not completely the lowest one because the game would look horrible and yeah my fps actually became a lot more stable for most of the time i was seeing above 240 fps and only in like small instances if there's like maybe a lot of people again keep in mind guys this is the ultimate benchmark this is not a realistic scenario for a premiere or comp match because you have so many more players actually in deathmatch and i figured out okay i still want to get actually these 240 fps and that it doesn't drop below that what can i do so i tried it actually four by three guys 1280 times 960 which is also simple using at the moment i think it's his main rest for how many years now there you can see it guys i get super consistently high fps throughout the whole entire match which was amazing so therefore this 400 dollar budget build can actually run cs2 at 240 hertz if you tweak around the settings a little bit more i mean you don't even have to play on 4x3 you can even just like go for a lower 16x9 resolution but this was the easiest step so i just took it to 4x3 so actually with turning your settings down enough you can actually utilize 240 hertz on this build and it's also worth mentioning that valve is of course gonna upgrade cs2 in the next few weeks or months because they know how bad it's running even on like high-end hardware like on my main pc it also sometimes drops below 300 fps and there i have like an i9 13000 and like a 37 and DTI with 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM. But I'm more than positively actually surprised by the results, guys. And let me know what you think of this budget build and if I should maybe build another one for around $200 to see if we can actually run 144Hz. And definitely make sure to check out my two guides for CS2 if you want to improve your performance even more.